All right, this morning we are going to be making healthy pancakes without chemical leavening. We will explain this process and the dangers of chemi chemical leavening and all that other stuff. So what do we have here? Well, we have organic eggs. See that? Yep. And I believe they say free range. Cage free is used by the industry to say cage free when they're just uh, still using cages, so cage-free does not mean what you think it means. Yep, and there's the, the most important thing when it comes to meat or eggs or whatever else, no antibiotics. Yes, no added hormones, no synthetic pesticides, and no gen genetically modified organism feed. Very, very critical things to yep. note. The antibiotic thing, just for the record here, because we use no antibiotic meat and whatever else too, it's kind of pre-treating disease is what right. they do with antibiotics. So It's basically you're and, ingesting your vaccination literally without being a needle sticking into your arm. Right, and so what it does is it kills your healthy, the Probably. bacteria in your, in your stomach. So without getting into too much technical detail, right. but let's continue. And so keyword free range. Yep. And yeah, they're more expensive, but you know, a couple dollars more and it's much, much better for your health. Yes. And you'll see too that the yolks are very, they're kind of a dark, darker orange color instead of a yellow, bright yellow. Right. Which we'll show. But uh, go ahead. Okay. Start. Now we have, good thinking sweetie. This is the difference between the yeast. Initially we thought over the past There's several the years time. that we've been here in Maine, we thought, well, there's just no way to make pancakes healthy and natural. Initially, we were using baking soda, which is refined washing soda. And then the Lord showed us, no, you use yeast. Yeast yeah. predates baking soda. And so we started out using this. And that didn't do a thing. It did the nothing. The pancakes came out very flat. Yes. <laughs> They did and not rise all that well. They weren't they fluffy. They didn't taste that good either. Right. So then the Lord showed us this type of yeast. And yep. rapid rise. Yes. Yep. And it acts a lot better. It makes things rise a lot better. Yes, it does. And so, the pancakes taste really, really good. Yeah. So please do not use active dry for making pancakes. Only use rapid rise yeast. Right. Okay. And you know, again, we, we, this, these videos are about natural okay. cooking and healthy cooking. Now that goes in the refrigerator, remember? Oh, okay. Never mind. Um, it's about natural cooking and things. Um, a lot of this stuff is expensive initially when you first buy it, but it's, you know, much, much better for your health. And once you buy it, then the adding all the ingredients together is going to be a lot cheaper. And the whole thing with baking soda too, um, if it doesn't come from nature, well, you kind of want to avoid it. So... All right. Because this is a double batch, and I will need. So, one. alrighty. Um, do we need to melt butter and things? Yes. Okay. And I'll do that here in a moment. If I don't have enough yeast, then it won't turn out too good. Okay. Okay. Then it, the recipe calls for uh, three. No, excuse me. Two tablespoons of melted butter. It says, or canola oil, but we don't use canola oil. Canola oil. Yep. It's a scam. So we use butter. Yep, and again, it's pretty good stuff, organic. Salted butter. Salted butter. And so, okay, go ahead and put that in the pan there. Okay, so I will put in... Oliver's holding up the salt there, which we'll get back to that here in a little bit. A what type of salt we use. Is that for the double batch? Yes, because the single batch calls for two tablespoons. And two okay. tablespoons is half of this. So All right. This is what we need for the recipe. Make sure Four to take it out of the paper. Yes, <laughs> I'm just showing the amount. All right. Come on now. Paper is good for you. It's healthy. The government says that you can cook with paper on whatever the food is and be perfectly healthy and fine. I'm no, sure. what? Oh. Come on. Okay. All right, we'll it. melt this butter and we'll be right back. Okay, here we have the, the butter. Used this pan last night for the brown butter. It's just got butter residue in it. In other words, not a big deal. And you want to set your heat to about three and a half, right in between the three and the four, right there. Now we're going to be, while the butter is melting, we're going to be using two cups of milk, you said? Yes, because okay. it's a double batch. We use whole milk. 
from yep. the store for recipes? Because if you used raw milk uh, for recipes, you were heating it, which is essentially pasteurizing it. And so that's why we just use it. We don't drink it. Um, we call it white cooking liquid. Yes. <laughs> so, and in, in terms of the raw milk thing too, by the way, um, we actually were, we did have a, a access to raw milk and we don't anymore. Um, we did when we were down in Pennsylvania, which was a nice change, but um, we really, you know, we don't have access to it. So I know a lot of people don't have access to it. So it's kind of one of those things. There's other other things that you can get a lot of the same nutrients from but you know the idea with natural health is you can put that down son we're not ready to talk about right. that yet the idea with natural health is that you want to you know there's a lot of different foods that are really really good for you and you want to get as much of that in your diet as you can it's about nutrition you know that's the secret so there's your egg going in I'll show you can see just how orange those things are. They're they're a really nice orange color. The the darker the yolk, the better the egg. Right. Essentially, they're eating can, a better diet. If you find free range organic uh, eggs of the quality that we just showed in with white colored shells, that's fine. The color of the shell just indicates the breed of the chicken. Right. It doesn't mean brown colored shells are superior to white colored. The color of the shell doesn't matter. Yeah. The quality of the yolk matters. Yep. The banging in the background is our dog playing with a toy. Mm -hmm. So she likes ah! to make she might likes to make noise. Yeah. I should have put the the eggs in first. I messed up and put the milk, the white cooking liquid in first. Yep, that's fine. Yep, just kind of stir those up with what, a fork? With just a regular fork that you eat with. Yep. Not too much. And, you know, stirring. some of this is going to seem somewhat elementary to some, you know, people out there that are very familiar with cooking. But remember, there's people that are not familiar with cooking. All You're right. anxious to talk about that salt, buddy, but we're not quite there yet. Two tablespoons of sugar. This is turbinado, right? Yep. Also this is the kind of a natural sugar it's not the white refined stuff if, right if it's white sugar it's not good it that's what natural sh sugar looks like yes. like pure cane sugar white is refined so if it same thing with a whole bunch of other stuff if it looks white as snow you know it's been chemically modified from its original look yep so we will use two tablespoons of sugar okay I can go and uh, we that's an old jar by the way we found that actually at a old abandoned um, where an old barn used to stand and it had come down and whatever okay. Oliver likes to help with putting things in okay. and there we go Good job, into the mix all right add a cup on Please put this away, sweetie. Yeah, where it goes. Put it away. Watch your head. Don't bang yes. the on the paper towel there. Or the pan. Oh, no, 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 no. Now we need to check up on the butter because the butter should be done. Okay, we'll filling. be right back. Okay, butter's still melting. Just kind of sloshing it back and forth like that will help it to melt without burning or whatever. And you need, you said you need a spatula, yes. so we'll get you a spatula. Here. Okay, here we go. Butter is melted. Yep. Now you gotta pour it into the bowl. Mix. Okay. We're not setting up any kind of fancy lighting or anything here either, by the way. This is normal. We're not gonna be a cooking channel, you know. This is just, we're just showing you some of the recipes that we like to make. Right. In a series of videos. King James Video Ministries is not going to become a video, a uh, cooking right. ministry or something. We still are gonna be preaching the word. But people need to get their health uh, in better shape. Yes. So, okay. And eating good food will get you healthy, among yep. other things, and proper exercise. Help you straighten out a lot of other problems that you have. Okay. Put this so, here for a minute. Oliver's going to start stirring everything together. Not too crazy. Yeah. Remember, nice and slow and steady. Okay. 
Now I can work on the full power. Oops. I'll probably just get a different measuring cup. Yep. And spoon. you measuring cup. And you got so need that up the towel. Yep, so. we'll do that. See it's getting mixed up pretty good. By our Chef's oh, it's. Intro. I thought it was a electronic mixer. No, actually, it's just a. It's an organic mixer. Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> Non-electric organic mixer. No, I like that. That's right. Your, isn't your name organic? All right. No. No. Here's okay. half a cup of flour. Again, the flour that we use right there. Okay. Put it in. Bite it up. Stirring it. I right. bake it up. Now we need two more cups. I bake that up. Yes, you did. Very good, sweetie. Okay. Another cup coming in. One. Cup. Yep. And one more cup. At the end, it gets into dough. You can see a dough. See there. There we go. Get in the dough. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Okay. Now we do a lot more stirring. Just some get everything all mixed up. You don't need an electric blender. Right. Now you don't need to be watching the thing. Just <laughs> when you're watching, you're not stirring, son. Right. <laughs> you're stirring. Uh, okay. Now one teaspoon of salt. Okay. This is Celtic sea salt. Mm -hmm. It is coarse salt. It yes. is not a finely ground salt. It's a very just comes right out of the ocean essentially. Really, really good. Very, very high in a lot of different minerals and things like that. Again, white salt is a refined salt. It's not yes. good for you. Um, white salt will raise your your blood pressure. White salt will do all kinds of bad stuff to you. Believe me, I used to be very much addicted to it. Celtic sea salt, like the gray salt, is is uh, just so good on so many levels it does not give you headaches you know I mean everything in moderation let me just leave the lid off that I want to just show a little bit closer up of that um, and you can see it there it's, a, it's not a it's kind of a damp salt mm -hmm. again that's another reason why they add a lot of things to the white like Morton's table salt because then it doesn't stick together like this right. this is the look of true salt okay that comes right out of the sea very 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 good stuff and it's not iodized because yeah. iodine comes from the seaweed and different aquatic plants of the ocean yeah and the stuff iodized salt is a sort of a synthetic thing right come on here focus okay then there we, we go need, last of all the rapid rise yeast so yep these four okay. packets in because each one of these packets okay. is two and a quarter teaspoons okay. and can you so, I initially thought, well, I'll need four packets, but they're not that far off from a tablespoon. So, really, I miscalculated. You only need two of these packets. You're going to say four. Seem to be an awful lot. I thought, man, they're going to be thick pancakes. <laughs> Very poofy. I am trying to be different. Don't pick on me, please. Uh-huh. All right. I'm gonna put them in. Good. Make sure you get all the yeast out of there so you yep. don't waste it. <laughs> My mom was very, very big on that concept. Make sure you get all the little tiny crumbs yep. out of the package. Open that up, team. Wow! Wow! It needs to be shook. 
No, Stella. Okay, oh, Anna no, Tal. I didn't quite uh, get it. Now don't be looking into the camera. You're <laughs> every time you look into the camera, you're not stirring correctly. Right. Okay. And he always has to see what he's doing. And uh, initially, um, the Lord helped me to find this book way back, not long after He saved me. Probably within the first couple months of Him saving me, He led me to this book online, and it has a lot of very interesting ideas and recipes in it and uh, this is you can tell that I've modified the recipe because this is where the original canola oil was was mentioned and obviously I crossed that out because canola oil is a scam it's very bad for you yeah and uh, butter is butter yes and yeast is is far superior to baking powder, which includes baking soda or refined washing soda. So yep. that's where I got the hey. recipe from. Hey. And, mm -hmm. uh, hey. The Lord has helped me to make the recipe so many times that I don't refer to it outside of just getting the ingredients. Right. So I don't need to look at the instructions anymore. So now we just stir it up mm -hmm. and we'll be back here in a little bit to show how to fry them up on the stove. And don't worry, we have a quality control man in charge here. He helps me determine if my batter is fully mixed on the sides and on the bottom. Yep. So. All right, we'll be back in a few seconds. All right, now we got to get the stove ready. As you can see, there's a lot of grease splatters and things there. It's kind of dirty. How do you get it off? Well, you got to go and get some kind of harsh chemical thing. No, you can actually make your own. This is an old olive oil bottle, and you can make your own citrus degreaser. This is actually a good use for baking soda. Pour a little bit of it onto the stove surface, like that. You don't have to worry about it getting on your hands because it's not toxic. I'll put the recipe for the grease, uh, the uh, degreaser thing here. As you can see, it just pretty much takes it right off. And again, you can see some of the grease in here. Just go like that, rub it back and forth. It comes right off. Really cleans up the stove nice. And uh, I've been using this stuff for years. The only problem with it is because it's got baking soda in it, it uh, when it dries, it does kind of make a kind of a gray streaked finished a little bit but you can just take water and clean that off if you really want that nice glossy black look and you know it's of course it's more of a just the looks of the stove rather than real danger but if it builds up too much then you can have some problems you know with things so but there you go there's a all-natural oven degreaser as well just kind of throw that in there while they're mixing up the pancake batter Here we are, we're going to be now frying up the pancakes on the stove top. Mm -hmm. What do we use here? Well, we have bacon grease. Okay, some leftover bacon grease from making bacon. Antibiotic free bacon, of course, yes. is what we use. Um, okay. And basically you want to warm up your stove to what number? Four. Number four, you want to... Get it there. If I remember and it correctly. might be a little bit different on your stove as well. You know, this is kind of an old one we've had since yeah, when so. we first got married. Yeah. And, uh. <laughs> so, yep, you want to let the bacon grease melt, let it get on the bottom of your pan. A uh, little note on the pan there it's just an old Paul Revere stainless steel. Stainless steel copper clad bottom yep copper clad bottom we got these things used on ebay for really cheap mm -hmm. you can find them in secondhand stores a lot of times too didn't we find some um, another one at a thrift store yeah you can find them at thrift stores but do not use non-stick teflon coated 
the pans. Yes. Um, because they basically off gas, number one. Number two, the Teflon, when they get older, it chips off and then you got major problems. Yes. And um, even the newer styles, I, um, the, the Shriner who I've told stories about, he bought a, a Teflon indoor grill for me and it, not long after the first or few times of using it, it started to chip off. And I thought, I don't like the look of this. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yep. He used the goofy so. way of saying, oh, it's okay. It's completely safe. Yeah, it's not it's, safe. It's real bad. Teflon so. is... 100% toxic. Yep. So you want to use stainless steel or cast iron is also good. Yes. Uh, we have some cast iron skillets, some old ones, but they're all in storage right now. So um, but go ahead and take your spatula and kind of just get it around. You want to make sure that the surface of the pan is... Oliver, please be quiet. You want to make sure that the surface of the pan is covered so that the pancake does not stick to an uncovered area right and you can use you know uh, we're not saying you have to use bacon grease if you're jewish certainly don't use bacon grease if you want to stick with the you know the ways of the jewish people there that's fine uh, if you don't want to use bacon grease you can use olive oil you could use butter um not a problem we we are very high tech here we use a clothespin to keep the spoon from submerging in. itself in the bowl and being covered by the batter. Now that's a patented secret. We weren't, you weren't supposed to say that. That was top secret. I'm sorry. Oh, well, it's I terrible. I lost my security clearance over it. Uh, I don't think we have one. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then uh, even more high tech. Yeah. You know, well, you got to keep it there. Yeah. We keep our, our high tech gadgetry right here with a screw, you know, into the side of this ugly cabinet there. So. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's only the finest here, you know. And our, Measuring cups, our stainless steel measuring cups, are screwed into the wall with this magnetic strip. It's very high tech and yes. trendy. Only the best, you know. Yes. <laughs> and most of these, you know, all not most, all of these we got at secondhand stores too. Yes, and um, online on paid eBay. almost nothing for them. Yeah. Dollar or two. Um, I don't think any of our pans are brand new. <laughs> not that I'm aware of. So you want to take a spoonful of it. This and is my regular mixing spoon that was used to mix up the batter. Yep. And a little bit more batter on that one. I don't one. really go for shapes and everything. I just plop it in the pan. Yep. And she likes to do one at a time. I try to do a couple at a time and I end up rushing it and they don't come out as good. So that's why she's making the pancakes right now, not me. And what you want to look for you, is you the bubbling funny boy on the over edges. There. He always laughs at me. Uh huh. It's terrible. So, you basically, like she said, you want to look for the edges to start to bubble. Mm -hmm. You'll see little bubbles coming up through the batter, which will back when that starts to happen. Okay, I think we're ready. Did you say? Yes. All right. Let's see what it looks like. See the little bubbles it's starting to Some form. Little mm -hmm. bubbles starting to form. Gotta get underneath it. Not destroying it. Ah, there we go. Good. It's a little bit light on this side, but that's okay because you can flip it, flip it again. Yep. So you just let it cook for a little while longer till mm -hmm. it's brown on the other side, and then we'll continue. All right. I think we got our first one done. That's right. Right there, you can see it's just got a little bit of a brown collar on the top. And you stick it over in there, in a bowl, like that. Brown on the top, brown edges. A little crispy on the edges, just the way we like it. And Oliver puts a plate on top to keep the heat in, keeps them nice and warm till we're ready to eat. Right. And yes, that, for all you southern people, it does say CS, okay? Confederate States there. We like to play around with, uh, at each meal, Sometimes they'll play the role of the Southern Belle and they'll be the Union Gentleman and vice versa. Uh -huh. Depends we on went to a, a used store up here and we found these stainless steel bowls. They're kind of replica Civil War things or something. Because we put all of our good, you know, glass dishes and things into storage. So we just wanted some something we could be kind of rough with, with camping and whatever else. And so that's why we have these uh, Confederate and Union Civil War replica plates. And Oliver, he's neutral. He doesn't have, you know, north or south. His doesn't have an emblem on it, so. 
but all right so we're gonna fry up the rest of these pancakes and we'll be back when they're all finished that's right all right here's the final pancake done very exciting and here are the things that we like to put on our pancakes first of all start out here we have raw honey it's not uh, heated cooked or whatever else and this is a raspberry it's made the bees pollinate raspberry flowers in other words and it's a really 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 good honey next we have main beekeeper raw and unfiltered wildflower honey again it's important to get raw honey uh, there's a lot of nutritional benefits in it. It's basically a superfood. That's why it's mentioned in the Bible. Um, nearly, 60 extreme, times. nearly 60 times. Really, really good. And here we have um, mild salsa. Actually, no, I'm just kidding. It's peanut butter. <laughs> it's our own uh, homemade peanut butter. You just take peanuts and you grind them up in a blender. And you can make your own peanut butter. It tastes much better than the stuff you get at the store. Mm -hmm. Here's local produced. Uh, um, maple syrup, little gingerbread man bottle. Here we have, yep, here's the same company that makes the raspberry honey. We have goldenrod honey, uh, really good stuff, raw honey again. And this is new, we're going to be trying this uh, blackstrap molasses, organic blackstrap molasses. So I'm anxious to try that this morning. So hopefully, you like the recipe, hopefully, you'll try this. Uh, it's much better tasting, really good taste than the baking soda type or the mixes or whatever else. It's not that difficult to make.